Hey everyone, welcome to Dropping Clef Bombs Season 2, Episode 1. We're here with the commissioner himself right before the draft, and we're ready to talk about <laughs> <laughs> the, the league. The league for, uh, yeah, uh, here to talk about the league, where we're going, where the draft might look like. I don't know if we're going to give away too much of that, our strategies. Hopefully not. I hope not. I'll, I'll be honest. Unlike Tori, I have not done a lot of research on the oh, picks and lots. stuff. So if you guys are watching this, it's probably not before the draft who knows when it's going to be but yeah you guys haven't started looking at it you're way behind <laughs> yeah and i'm just gonna say if you're not gonna watch this anyways i might as well throw a warning out there's a yeah. lot of grenades if you don't do a mock draft or two you won't understand what i'm talking about yeah. i highly suggest it there's a lot of players that should not be in the top 100 that are, and there are a lot of players outside the top 150 that should be in the top 100. And there's a lot of injuries from last year. You add in the whole COVID factor of just not knowing anything, what we're expecting, new new opponents, new hockey style, new travel plans, new everything. Who knows? Has there been word that everyone's playing in Canada? I, I don't. It's been like said they're doing it, but it honestly hasn't been like, okay, we're doing travel, we're doing that. Like, that hasn't been approved, from my knowledge. And I'm, okay, yeah, I haven't... I, have yeah, I haven't had my it. finger on the pulse. Yeah. I, I just, like, I, I just know. have to... I assume it, that would be something that would be on Twitter, and I'm on Twitter, like, reading through yeah. the comments of hockey. So, I'm assuming I know that... you are more so than I, mm -hmm. so... No, I'm with but you. But I know like... that it's been kind of a dark period. A lot of the, uh, like, the shows on TSN and a lot of different podcasts I listen to are kind of taking this last week 10 days off because it's kind of like that last week of august just before training camps and stuff open up mm -hmm. everyone's kind of taking their their last little bit off um so i mean that being said I, I feel like that's kind of why we haven't heard all the plans i think that this upcoming week or the week after we're really gonna you know well obviously july 13th we're on, or january 13th we're only uh 13 well, 12 days now away from the start first games so yep. i mean things got to get moving quick right Two weeks, two weeks, and uh, we're returning to this fantasy league with the same 10 players that ended it last season. Um, so we did the draft with the ping pong balls or golf balls. Um, golf balls with the really annoying glass ball <laughs> shaking thing. But it was great. That was way too loud for the yeah, recording. It was great. So if you do listen to that, just turn it down a little bit. But I would definitely check that out because mm -hmm. if you forget what happened, or if you want to just double or check to make sure think, everything was done legitimately, yeah, legitimately, then we have proof. We've done everything, and like we said, we, I grabbed four random golf balls. I told him tailor made yeah. Nike, whatever, and he wrote them down. I, whatever worked, I got lucky, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. I got unlucky. But, uh, so I, they're, they're exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. I mean, it, it, we'll see what happens. But I mean. Yep. I'm excited for draft. I, I think it's going to be interesting for a lot of people this year because it's the first second year keepers for a lot of people. Um, it's going to be interesting to see a lot of players where you expect them to be at the top and then all of a sudden they're just not there because they're being kept in rounds three, four, five, six, whatever. Yep. It's going to be really strange when picks yeah, just like, start flying off the board. Like if you haven't looked ahead at what picks are kind of aligned with certain picks for you, you you'll be caught off guard for sure and I'll, mm -hmm. i'm kind of counting on a couple of the players of the league to be like that sorry boys mm -hmm. um i that's how i call them how i see them you snooze you lose <laughs> fair warning like if you're not going to pay attention you're basically just donating the money and the thing is and this is why i thought it was so important to do this was make the next year ten dollars more which means times yeah. everybody there's a hundred dollars more worth it the following year yeah. So if you're really not in it that year, it's really worth it to just throw up your hands and go the next year. But if you're going to do that every year, what's the point? I mean, you're welcome. Just mm -hmm. donating money to people. It's fun and everything. But like, I do suggest putting some time into it and, and trying to, especially some people who forfeited, no, I shouldn't use the word forfeited, but maybe used last year as an opportunity to make their team better this year. There's two people, myself and Nick, who both, traded a lot of our assets to try and go for it we're mm -hmm. coming for you we're yeah. expected to miss the playoffs so we're the underdogs and you know we're not going to stop we're going to yeah, use all I'm of our ads we're going to be you know we're going to be active so if, if the teams that aren't 
that expect that you're just going to be there. Remember, it's one win per week. You can have an amazing team go cold for a couple of the wrong days. You could miss putting a goalie in for a shutout. You could put a goalie in accidentally that's not playing that night. Like, there's a lot of things that could impact your week when you're not paying attention, especially just before games start. Yeah, if you get cold. And if games start at weird times. Like, yep. Yeah, I'm it's... excited to see some of this upset. Some people are going to be shocked of what this goes on. Um, so we got the first round picks. Everyone has their first round picks. So I don't know if this is something you want to look at. I haven't looked at it too in-depthly. All I know is I'm 10th pick. Uh, and that, to me, is like, ugh. <laughs> um, all the good players are in the draft. Uh, we can touch on how Kucherov can be an interesting situation, um, who would mm-hmm. normally be a top five pick. Which again, I feel like anyways, just, no matter how you want to cut it. fucked me again because it just made my player this much worse. Potentially, yeah, it's more it, risky. It, well, it shifted everybody up a pick. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So whoever was sitting on five or six is probably a little upset. I guess it might end up helping yeah. me more than it hurts me. Who knows? It really makes the draft more solid who goes number three and four instead of three, four, five. Yeah. In my eyes, anyways. Because that's where he was to me. He was in that second tier with two or three other guys. But like you said, just kind of shifts everything up and takes one of your guys out of out of the equation, possibly. But mm-hmm. how, how far down do you think he drops? Well, I'm gonna I don't be, think it'll be I'm, below I'm, the fourth I'm not, round. I'm not afraid to say this right now. I'm not drafting him. So yeah. who knows? I don't at know all? If, at all. Even if you have a pick in the ninth round? Okay, well, let's be real for a second. Like, don't say never. <laughs> <laughs> is he, I mean, he going to pull a Johnny, go? Johnny Manziel? Will take him. Johnny Manziel down the draft board? So, somebody told me, I'm not going to say who, but somebody told me that they thought Tarasenko would still go in the top five rounds. Do you think okay. Tarasenko is still a top five round pick? Kucherov is top five round pick. No question, right? Uh, Kucherov should go before Tarasenko, yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, but the thing with me is I have my two picks at 10 and 13, but mm-hmm. then I don't have Which a pick. I wouldn't take them there. Yeah, and then Until... I don't have a pick till like the sixth round. So like, so if he's there, would you gamble or would you just need to still get guys you need as you're yeah, a little thin, I, I right? I think it really depends on, it really depends on who's on the board. Like if it, mm. I have like, I have four picks in those two rounds, six, seven. So like, yeah, I could maybe, if he's still there, maybe sixth round, keep yeah. him for a couple of years. I am trying to win every single year. So he would be a, yeah. a big piece to being and, able to do that. For me, I always try to put players in two buckets. Are you this year only, or are you now moving forward? Are you dying? And I yeah. tend to, yeah, I tend to have more value on guys that provide value more moving forward, even if it's not exactly right now. Yeah. So, like a guy like Tarasenko, a guy like Kucherov, a guy like Sagan, a guy like Bishop, these guys are on my radar. Should I say that out loud? I don't know. I don't care. But they're not going to see this before where... the draft. No, I know. But you... well, I guess you're going to edit it, right? But even even then, like not those much. guys are definitely on my radar. But it depends on what picks, right? And like if I'm sitting there, I have off the top of my head, I think I have like is it fifth round, two picks in the fifth round, I think, and then two picks in the eighth round, I think is what the way it is. So I've talked. I know I have four picks in the top 100. So like those picks are all going to be guys that if they're sitting there, they're boom bust. Because I have a strong opinion that a replacement level this year is going to be a higher bar than last year. What do you mean? So there's going to be more level? like harder to get. I might be saying that wrong. There's going to be better talent on free agency. There's really? going to be more replacement level players than there were hmm. in the past. Because so not to step out of fantasy for a second, but I, what somebody asked me about the Leafs and their schedule, and I said I think the Leafs have an advantage in their division because their coach, their coach is most recently associated with the AHL and the, the way that the AHL plays their schedule. Mm-hmm. And with me paying attention to the Marlies, I watched how Keith used the Marlies, and what he did is often he would play, he'd have like defensive pairings, 
and he'd be like, yeah, we have three games in four nights. You're my pairing, but yeah, it sucks you're sitting out. But game two, your pairing is sitting. And my other pairing that sits the other two games are coming in. And it gives Ooh. that pairing in that game that they come in a showcase opportunity to come in. Three together as, too. Exactly. And as two guys to be like, okay, they've showed you what they have. This is what we got. So you translate that across the league with three and four nights, back-to-back stuff like that. I think you're going to see more of that. But I think you're going to see more lines where you take any top prospect. If there's two games and three nights, maybe they get one of those games. And maybe they put up four points that night. But then they don't play the other two nights. So if you're keeping an eye on that and you see the news, you know, um, Jesse Puglio Yarvi is playing on the top line with Dry Seidel and, and McDavid for a back to back against Ottawa. Maybe yeah. you grab Puglio Yarvi and he puts up five points in two games for you, which is way above replacement level. And then you, then you kick him. That's what I mean. And yeah. if you don't have a spot to use that and you've committed all your spots, yeah, you that's... can't do that. Very true. Advantage. Which I, that's why. That's why I'm happy I have all these loose spots. Like I have, like I said, four picks in the top 100. Then I have my or five picks in a row uh, in the 11th round. Mm -hmm. And then I have a pick in the 14th, which will just be a strictly future potential keeper boom bust guy. But like I'm looking at those four spots with Vasilevsky, Dreisaitl, Kachuk, and Shesterkin. That's my team. That gives me five other roster spots to just – find luck out trade for scoop it like i already told dylan if you draft somebody that's shit in the bed for you and you're afraid to drop them and you want to get something for them i'll i have a landing spot for you there's only probably <laughs> two or other three, other th- I, I already i'm already laying the seeds right like because like realistically if somebody drafts somebody who uh, i'll just use monahan because i was looking at him today at some stuff and if Monaghan plays on the top line with Goudreau and Lindholm or Kachuk, they could put up a lot of points, right? Yeah. But I was reading uh, a beat writer from Calgary's projected lineup, and they actually had Monaghan on the third line. That's wrong, but he was saying that he would line him up there so he could take advantage of other teams' weaker lines. Right. Yeah. So, like, you look at that as a promotion or demotion, depending on where he could go. But you draw, draft Monaghan, and then all of a sudden he's on the third line and he's not producing, like, may, you know what? Maybe I will take two rounds somewhere. You know, give me a ninth for a 11th, and at least he's tucked away on somebody's team and not free for grabs that, you know, maybe you or Jesse or Sean, who are right there behind him, get him and pushes you up, right? So A little like, bit stronger, yeah. No, for sure. I, for I got sure. landing spots, so I – I'm not as weak as I looked. Well, that's the that's paper. the thing. The people that were in the hunt last year are used to the bad teams being bad, whereas this year the bad teams are going to be paying attention, like we talked about, paying attention, pain doing the, the ads, ass. being a pain in the ass. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's the thing too is if I use five ads, you have to use ads two minimum because those are minimum we, we, pace yeah usually. we got to be those are the games you have to be winning if you're if you're going for yeah. that president's trophy right president's trophy how much uh of percentages of the pool is that i always forget uh it goes up every few years because it's all kind of proportion but yeah. for the first couple years it's the same okay. so it's like a hundred a hundred a hundred and then i think year four i'm going off my head 100 year four or five goes up to 150 okay so i the- keep it all like 100 is not like kind of steady it's not super weighted towards president's trophy then that's good no but it's a hundred dollars in hand sean won and Free COVID weeks. happened it's a hundred dollars in hand he got right yep that's true Free anything season. can happen in the playoffs it's true. maybe it's worth maybe taking a chance to get that hundred dollars in hand and lose in the playoffs then say ah screw it i'll finish second and try and win the grand prize because maybe then... you lose in for round one you get nothing it's true and then now you're drafting seventh or eighth yeah, he, he which would have been him had we played the playoffs. He was going home. Uh, I had a feeling it was going to be me versus you in the finals. <laughs> it was. I, that's what my gut told me. Yeah. I could have been wrong, obviously, but like, we'll never I probably know. was wrong. But like, I think that's the, the thing. Just that because of the, the podcast and everything, it just it felt like it was climaxing to that. Like I don't know. That's what hurts the most is we'll never actually know who would have mm-hmm. won. Mm-hmm. Who would have won? All right. I think odds odds would have put me in the favorite just because of my roster. 
I'm not trying to be <laughs> cocky, but like if you look on paper, yeah. I think odds makers probably would have made me favorite. Mm -hmm. But I think could have been, yeah, that could have obviously right? gone different. It's so cocky. exactly, anything yeah. can happen. Yeah, but all right, I uh, don't know what else. What else do you want to touch on with uh, fantasy? We talked about the draft. Drafts coming up. Um. I mean, I'm excited as hell for year two. Yeah, me too. I know you said that you haven't done a lot of work, but I've been doing work for weeks and weeks and weeks. I mean, like, I'm I'm sports to the core, right? And, like, when there hasn't been sports on, I can, you know, watch TV. I can watch shows. I can watch episodes. But, like, I still want to pay attention or mm -hmm. be putting some sort of effort into sports. And especially when I have the podcast with you or, like, fantasy sports, like, putting the work in makes – worth it right like it pays yeah. dividends yeah and i'm gonna be honest i i don't regret it but i i can definitely feel that i'm behind the eight ball where i could have been uh definitely just getting ready and giving you the predictions of my divisions like looking at the teams like projected mm -hmm. lineups and stuff i'm like damn like how many goalies were on different teams blew my mind um i was yeah. caught off guard heavily. that's what i mean by grenades because like you look at a lot of these goalies there's there's a lot of teams with two strong goalies. Yeah. And then there's a lot of teams with no good goalies. So like you got to think eventually it will sort out and like some of those teams will trade off or move those goalies to better spots. Yeah. Like I'll use Carolina for example. Carolina's not going to make the playoffs or be close to the playoffs without a goalie. Could they go and scoop up a Flurry? Could they go and scoop up a I don't know, a Jones? Jones isn't good, but like one of these other goalies that could help them if they want to make the playoffs they have to yeah. like Carolina. in the mock i did earlier mrazic mrazic was the fourth goalie taken what sorry fifth behind vasilis vasilis fifth goalie taken he was taken ahead of rask he was taken ahead of price he was taken ahead of kemper bishop but what are these uh, these mock drafts could just be drunk idiots I'll, man like what how much could be yes play? you can't put a lot but like it's just funny, like, to see people reaching and whatnot, because, like, like I said, the grenades, there's going to be a lot of people, not in the top 40, but maybe between 40 and 70, that take players that are below replacement levels, which will just let the better talent slide lower and lower and lower. And if too many guys do that, A, their teams are going to be weaker, but B, when I have all those back-to-back -back picks and I can round out my team as I need to, there better not be five players that make my team good at that same time. Because if so, who cares if that those picks are in the 11th round? Those players could be 7th, 8th round talent, potentially a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. And then all those draft that's... picks I traded last year are irrelevant. Well, that's how I've always approached drafts myself, is that I go in not locked in on any player. I just have the value of the player, and I pick based on value. And You know when to fold. Yeah, it comes from experience, right? But Exactly. I found of the first five rounds last year, I think I got the best value in the f five picks that I got. I think you did really well, yeah. I think so, so too. I'm hoping to duplicate it. Um, but to be honest, I used a lot of my keepers in those same spots. So hmm. part of it. But I see, I drafted like ass. My draft was terrible, but I drafted names. And then I attached picks to names to get actual guys that were contributing, yeah. which then led to me trading more picks with the contributors to get stars that weren't contributing as much. And then they started contributing. So yeah. I just manufactured everything. Yeah. I'm yeah. trying not to like, you know, I don't want no one to trade with me because I don't, that's going to ruin things for me. But like, <laughs> you know what I mean, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> Man, it, that's the thing. People don't want to trade with certain people. I don't understand because I think there can be a win-win situation. Almost, unless you're trading with your like direct competitor, like that mm. makes no sense. Like first and second, you could probably, always find a win-win with anybody. You could. You don't you really want the person. Whether you want to do it is a different question. Yeah, you don't really want the second place competitor winning. <laughs> Yeah, but if you had three centers and one was the winger and you're literally trading the same player just positional-wise and they're neither keepers or both keepers, yeah. you could find a trade there that, that yeah. satisfies both. But, yeah, I, I, I generally speaking, yeah, you, you're finding... And that's what I like about this Keeper League is the picks. The picks really make trading that much more fun. Yeah. Because you can negotiate. You can, like... 
you know, it's, it's kind of like having a little bit advantage. of money, yeah. Like not just player. You, mm-hmm. They're like the sweeteners into the deal that help get deals that were would be like, impossible otherwise. Yeah, you can never find a trade that matches up. It's always slightly off, and the picks just even if you're trading a seventh for an eighth, right? Like you can always recover that pick later. Yep. And like that, that's the big thing that I always say to Steve is like one of the main reasons why he traded Vasilevsky to me was because I didn't have a second rounder. And I told him, I was like, I don't see how I'm going to acquire one. I'm going to try, but I don't know how it's going to work. Mm-hmm. He's like, well, that's your problem, but I'll make the trade because it doesn't look like you can keep them. And I found a way to make it work, but I was lucky. Right. Like, so like that could have been all for nothing. Yeah. And I could have been sitting you, here. Didn't you use whatever, my Stamkos right? to fucking make it work? My Stamkos? Yeah, Stamkos, Malkin, COVID's bullshit. Liney, up everything. Markstrom, you, and then picks. You took advantage of COVID. How does that make you feel? It's because I traded for guys that I knew would have attached weight for keepers. Like, that's that's the way I do things. Like, if I want a one guy, one season guy that's just going to help me now, those guys are available. You can, you can get them for, for middle draft picks. But, like, if you want to gather talent and go for it make sure you get talent that you can then try to flip off to other people that's worth something because then you can at least recover on the back end right that's 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 how good gms do it oh oh is that why dubis got joe thornton hey, he's gonna be good <laughs> and the thing that no yeah, i'll touch on thornton later yeah we'll talk about I, that i find uh, it a, a joke but, yeah. um i don't know what else uh looking so who at who do you think's the favorite this year yeah who, so, who's uh, your odds on favorite or favorites uh so the favorite i'm gonna put rank me number one um oh i'm taking this one home i got it right where i want them everyone has better are you picks in all are you all, the only one in this tier or are there other oh, yeah. people in the tier with you okay uh no okay. i would say so okay i'll this is how i'll explain it i'm winning but I'm most fear, fearful of losing to uh, Beefy. I'll give him the shout, um, Dylan. Um, Rocket Trees, Jesse, I think. If He's the wild card. He's a wild card, and I think he's as excited as us. So I'm worried. Him with excitement worries me. Yeah, um, hold on. I'm just going to say people are sleeping on Jesse. I don't know this, but I'm just going to say it because I feel it. I, people I, don't know who Jesse is. He's coming in to replace brad who was just a loser and didn't do anything yeah and the fact that he's coming in i think people are just like ah he's another guy well, not his, expecting him to be i look at his team set up the same exact way as my team so like he has the possibility to be as good as me in my mind his team sucked last year too and that's part of the 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 i think downfall to what makes him look worse in that yeah. appearance is that he was given a kind of crappy team and he didn't he couldn't really do much, right? He did what he could, and he just went with what he had. And now he's getting a refresh, a new start mm-hmm. with the assets, with whatever what he wants to do with his draft. And that's that's where I like. He's the wild card in this whole thing for me. Yeah, no, I'm he. I would rank him pro- up there with me, him, beefy, and then I, I would say after that, I go down to another tier. To be honest, um, you don't have Sean in the top tier. No. Not yet. He. I'm changing on his status, but go ahead. I was just gonna say I I need to see more before I I I. He just didn't do the the ads and the stuff that make me feel. Threatened. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to get a piece of paper here. Or the deals. Like I I feel like if it comes down to it, like the trades and that will be able to keep me in the topper tier i don't know if he's capable i haven't seen it yet i know the other two are capable so mm-hmm. sure if he comes out firing and like right away then hell yeah he's 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 gonna be there are you writing this down so you can tell them to be like yo he's talking shit no i'm i'm writing down like stuff i want to talk about so i don't like always want to interrupt you and like okay. say something right yeah. now <laughs> so i'm just going to try and write it down yeah. so that i don't forget about it and then just like you know, ramble good. and random stuff good. and then so, not not hit what i want to hit <laughs> so af- after him um probably clump everybody else together uh joey again he kind of joey to me falls in the same as sean like what's he gonna do prove it to me him and Jamie. Okay. Even. 
Yeah. Okay. Um, and then Steve, uh, I don't know. I put him. I put all those six other guys kind of in their own. Anything can happen for those last two spots. So let me ask you this: If you had to put, if you had to put money on it right now, if you had to put a thousand dollars on it right now, at equal odds, who are, who are the four teams that do not make the playoffs? At equal odds, though, right? Like everyone. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, if I had two, I would say, sorry boys, like, there's no shade, but uh, I'm going to go with... Hey, it's a challenge more than anything, right? Prove us wrong. Yeah, Steve, I'm putting you in there, Jamie. I'm going to say, I'm going to say Nick's going to miss, Ooh. just because there's not going to be enough spots. I honestly, I'm worried, I, I'm not worried, but I think you're going to get in, so I'm going to give the last spot it's gonna be a, a shock it's either gonna be ben or joey that miss it's gonna be shock the yeah. world and it's gonna go back to what we were talking about earlier one of them might be sleeping i'm gonna call them a sleeper mm-hmm. and not yeah. in a good way <laughs> like a literal sleeper or yeah <laughs> like a snoozer yeah. but again this is just this is more than anything is a challenge to prove me wrong to these boys like exactly it's, it's easily possible and like a lot of our predict I would say a lot of our it's predictions fun too, yeah. are well. All, all predictions are are forecasting what's going to happen in the future based on what's happened in the past. Yeah. And in the past, there's been teams who are less active. There's been teams who haven't put in the work, who haven't done the ads, who um, maybe waited too long to make moves. Now is your chance to go and get ahead of it and do what you want to do to set up your team to win more money this year. Yeah. If you don't. You're gonna find these guys behind you, like me and Nick and whoever, trying to take your spot. Yeah, and that's so part of what goes. Let's into see how much it. you care. That's part of why I put like easily. I could put Dylan with Ben and Joey because, but the thing is, I know Dylan. I've known him for played fantasy with him for many years. I know he's gonna be mm-hmm. a, in there. Whereas these two, I've only played the well, one with year. Well, Dylan, when he knows he doesn't have a chance, he doesn't exactly. really care. No, exactly. But when he has a chance, he will be up at 4 a.m. to get the first guy so if his team if he drafts well if his team is good he's going to be a nightmare to play against yeah and i so. i totally under <laughs> yeah i understand that but i don't know that to be true for the other guys so that's why i would rank them lower yeah exactly yeah and i'm also get. i mean i know a lot of stuff obviously uh, people are busy with a lot of stuff and um mm-hmm. i mean i'm going to assume dylan is going to remain as active as as he has been um but i mean who knows if he doesn't if he takes two or three week nap on the season against the wrong opponents he can, he'll still be in the playoffs but he could find he opens the door for somebody else that would have otherwise been closed right yeah and like True. that's what i want to touch on for a second was just the schedule that's oh, uh yeah talk, I, I didn't talk about i that. didn't bring that up yet yeah yeah, yeah. so i used a, an app on my phone just like a generator and what i did is i just i sorted the league by alphabetical order and then I put one through 10 and then I just generated the league mm-hmm. and I took one through 10 into all the schedules and then I replaced all the numbers with the names. Yeah. So like, I didn't even know what the names were until they were already in all the brackets and everything. And then that's why I manipulated the schedule the way I did. So the only thing that I set up was you will notice a rivalry week, week seven and eight. So we're going to pretend it's two weeks, but it's actually worth two points. Okay. The trade deadline is in between those weeks. Oh, okay. So week one is the, the first part, trade deadline in the middle. Mm-hmm. You play the same team again, and then you have two more weeks playoff start. So it's kind of like the start of the final stretch in the rivalry. I did handpick the rivalries. I did speak to some of the people just to make sure everyone was kind of okay with it and everything. Mm-hmm. Some of the rivals aren't true rivals, but they're more rivals in the sense of like where they sit yeah. in competitiveness or whatever. Mm-hmm. So where I started was myself because I wanted to play Nick and Nick wanted to play me. And I mean, Nick could sense. have played Joey, yeah. but like Nick and I have a rivalry of all rivalries. Like yeah, and, I and you both all the time. sold last year and are expected to be the bottom. It just all we match a lot, fair, right? Yeah. 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 So that that that's where I started. That made sense. Yeah. The second one I went to was you and Jesse because yeah, same kind of similar story. situation, yeah. right? So then I went to okay, Sean, and I was like, okay, well, Sean and Dylan are probably the most 
comparable. I could have gone Sean and Jamie because they're actually friends, but I felt like that wasn't maybe the best way to go. And then I went with, what was it? Steve and Jamie and then yeah. Ben and Joey. And then, so everyone's kind of competing against who they should be competing against in projection for playoffs. Mm -hmm. So those weeks should be very important to get. And it could also lead to an interesting trade deadline. If certain teams make a certain move just before that week, might make another team react to those moves and get desperate. And yeah, you, you never know, right? So I did like manipulate that, playoff, that little maybe. bit. Potential mini Yeah, playoff. exactly. And we'll we'll keep track of the, the the rivalry and whatnot, and we'll see where it goes. If it's kind of silly, it doesn't mean anything. We can always look at removing it. I thought it'd be kind of fun to throw in there. I think I the idea kind of, of rivalry explain. week is great. Um, necessarily, mm. maybe rivalries will change over time. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, yeah. Hopefully they do. Because that's the thing is, if Nick and I both miss the playoffs. I'm just using us for example, but then we both end up facing each other for one, two. Well, then maybe that rivalry continues. Mm -hmm. Or if, you know, maybe I sneak into the playoffs and I lose in round two and Nick wins the consolation or whatever, maybe we aren't really rivals anymore. Maybe that's yeah. ready to change, right? So, exactly, like, it yeah. will change and we'll kind of evaluate it. We can see if they don't make sense, we can always mm -hmm. maybe do a show, uh, do a podcast mm -hmm. and determine the rivalries. Uh, yeah, we could limit know. it to and put yeah. like two names in the hat and be like, hey, it's one of us two or whatever. We'll figure it but out. Outside yeah, but that, I, I think it's I like all it. Manip yeah. Yeah. But outside that, it's, I'm sorry, I'm, I said all manipulated, but it's not, none of it's manipulated. It's all yeah. whatever. Randomized. But I will say, I have the freaking gauntlet the first uh, six weeks. I play the projected top six teams in the first six weeks. Really? Yes. My schedule so, sucks. Yeah, well, well, it sucks, but it also lets you be real right around trade deadline. Yes, but I could also start the season 0-5. Oh, and, and, <laughs> and then, see, uh, the but way then I you look know at the, it, You know you're a seller at that point. Exactly, right? And then at that point, I'm just going to trade off and just try to move all my picks up as much as possible. How and many... like, I don't care about telling the strategy because... Yeah. It will be what it it's is. Right? If people want my players, they're going to trade me picks. What? Like it's, it's How many easy, more right? but... weeks were last year during the season? Do you remember? There was 20. It's a lot less, right? It's like I half. think there was 20. It was 20 weeks the regular season. This, this year is 10. It's exactly half. Oh, we have 11. But, or no, sorry. 11. 22. We was... have 11 this year. We have 11 weeks? That's what it's showing. I don't think that's right. We have 10 weeks if you count rivalry week as two. Yes. Sorry. There's 10 matchups. So it, it should, that should, yes, yes. Yeah. So 10 regular season matchups. There's 10 wins available. So you play. Last year there was. Huh. But the math wasn't quite right. That's why we had to change the ads. Remember we talked about it a little bit in the group? Yeah. Because it was 10 plus 3 versus, I think it was 22 plus 3. So there was an extra week or an extra two weeks in there. I think we played 20 that... or 21 because we played like two two or three people tw uh, three times. I think twice, two people. Yeah, we played we played two people three times and everyone else twice. The, the only thing I'm, lo that, I'm looking at the schedule is. now that – stands out to me that i don't know if you looked at one sec so like my week 11 which is technically the only team i play twice is not the guy i played week one if that makes sense it's just like ran it seems like it's random which i guess you said you did so makes sense i didn't follow any of that but so what I'm saying is, like, week 11 is the last week of the season. Is It's the only time... Week 11 is the first week of playoffs. Okay, well, I'm, look, I'm looking at it right now, and there's a game, like, scheduled. Game scheduled? Like, a matchup scheduled? Yeah. We, it says week 11 matchups, and it's me versus Nick. And it's my second game against Nick on the season. Uh oh. Sorry, 
I'm looking at the league right now. Sorry. Yeah. It's all good. I just wanted to be right. That's all. Yeah, I, I know. I definitely want to check that. And I'm also worried about one thing. I'm going to be fully honest. Um, I can't move Gensel off your team. So in the draft list, I moved Gensel to be owned and kept by Jesse. Mm hmm so like when I finalized the team list and when I finalized who kept who and where those players go in the draft, all it's all done. It's all sorted. It's all 100% correct. If you go to commissioner tab or if you go to like where you would go and assign your keepers, yeah, I Wait, can't. Uh, Jesse, I actually have Jesse to assign my keepers. keepers. Oh. That's what I, I don't know how it works because in my mind, the way I think it is, okay, well, I'm, I've manually listed the entire draft rounds yeah. one through 14 i've you know checked like double check tri triple checked um manually uh that everything is correct yep um i i don't know it says on the like when you go to round five ten it says rocket trees though for jake gensel it does yeah for me okay so that's what i mean is like if I go to the final, if I go to the team list, if I go to all that stuff, it shows it's on his team. But when I, as the commissioner, go to the league page, you know, up at the top, it says like mm -hmm. your draft is scheduled for this day or like check out this or yeah. it says not every team has assigned their keepers. The keeper deadline has passed. Please um, approve all keepers as commissioner. So then I go to the keepers page and it shows me all the teams, all their rosters just as names listed, like nothing structural. And then it shows a line with the keepers above them. And everyone is correct. Everyone has four keepers, and they're all correct. But Jesse has three keepers. Gensel is on your team. I can't get him off of your team to get him onto Jesse's team. So I'm not going to do anything with the keepers and just leave them. We'll and... notice it. We'll be able to fix it on the fly. Yeah, like, if, it... if for some reason we'll just have to say no one take Gensel, and then we'll, yeah. when Jesse has that pick in the fifth round, then he'll just take Gensel. And yeah. then once he's on his team, we'll just manipulate his keeper status to. Because I have to track that. You can't anywhere on I never, that. I didn't know like I actually have three had to enter chapter. keepers in here. I track it. Yeah, oh, I know. On there? Yeah, I didn't know that was an You option. have the ability to. I see it now, yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I think that's more of like. Um, what do you want to say? Uh, like if we're trying to trade mm -hmm. and I go to your team page, I can see the little K. So I don't, I know not to bother you unless I'm going to blow mm -hmm. you away or maybe give you one of my keepers. Right. Mm -hmm. And then that way at the trade deadline, people know, okay, you know, don't even try to get this guy or, Oh, this guy's not a keeper. Maybe I can get like, him. You know, I think when it's more. When I do go to my team, I see Gensel on my team, but he has the keeper status mm -hmm. beside him. Mm hmm. Because so it says it, that it, you're keeping him. It says I'm keeping five. <laughs> yeah. And that's what I don't get. Like, it makes sense because Gensel's mm. been assigned as a keeper. So, like, that tells me that Yahoo's reading it properly. Yeah. But I won't actually know until we get to the draft, right? So, yeah, I'm, hope, that's the one thing that I'm a little fix. nervous about. Yeah, but worst case, we can have a quick conversation to say, hey, everybody, what, Gensel what is, time is that draft? not available. Uh, it's going to be at... <laughs> What did I say? Six thirty. Do you have the Sunday? Seven, so seven fifteen. Oh, seven fifteen. Okay, perfect. So, if, can you host? What do you want me can to you host? host? The like a chat group, like a we oh. can all go on and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I got so a, if, I got if a you channel maybe... we can all go into. Yeah. Okay. Well, if you want to maybe open that up um, at like six forty-five, maybe half an hour before. And we can all kind of get in and get situated and yeah, talk shit. chat and chirp. And yeah, like, I mean, that's the thing is Nick's not drafting until like he has one pick in round five. And then I think it's eight and beyond. I'm not, I have four picks sprinkled in before the hundreds there. But, like, It'll be quick. The there's a couple will, of I don't us think that, will take Oh, yeah. Long. Well, the, the keepers go in like five seconds. So people have got to pay attention if they're next. Yeah. Like if you don't know who's going, because it'll be like Alex's turn. Tori's turn and it's like oh shit that got here quick yeah like they don't usually wait the full time so like pay attention of course not, yeah okay like, especially in what is it round 
four and five were like half of the rounds are keepers like those two rounds will probably literally take like three minutes yeah like even it, the first it round won't, take, it won't, won't take long everyone probably knows yeah. who they're gonna take probably but, gonna be a 20 minute draft honestly yeah but maybe a bit longer should we but, re- i'm gonna record it fuck it record the draft yeah, yeah. see right. what happens see what we can do mistakes and stuff but like i said there's a lot of grenades there's a lot of replacement I'm probably gonna fucking players. do this shit. Um, I gotta do some. I gotta do some work. <laughs> I I already told you this, but I ranked my top 34 centermen, like centermen, centermen, not center wingers. I put all those guys in the winger category, pure centers. Then I ranked the top uh, 66 wingers, slash center wingers, and then the top 40 defensemen, the top 40 goalies, and then I tiered them all. So. I basically did that so I know, okay, yeah, I might like this guy, but there's five other guys in the same tier. What's the difference of the name? Mm-hmm. So that way some people might reach on them, some people might not. Yeah, that's another but... thing. There's quite a few defensemen who potentially have much higher roles. Or there less is, roles, but like, or less. there's this weird mystique that defensemen aren't valuable at all right now. There that's are wrong. valuable defensemen, are but some. it's like... They're good ones. I'd say... How many how many defense per team would you say should be rostered? Somewhere between one point eight and two point two. What like per so fantasy the, team? Basically, what I'm saying 20, 20, 20 defensemen in the league probably worth rostering. Maybe just yeah, under that. Twenty, yeah, I would say twenty. Sixteen, eighteen, maybe twenty if there's a rookie in the right situation. If you're trying to get some shot, high shot guys, maybe yeah. I went but through, that, but ratio wise, that makes sense. It does, yeah. but I'm just saying that some people like shouldn't probably say this but with talking about the schedule and stuff there's gonna be a lot of nights where the rosters are full so if you have wingers you're sitting and then instead of you know before what was it wednesday and saturday maybe were the big nights that you missed out on a game who yeah. cares whatever you add a defenseman get some shots whatever yeah. there might be three there's gonna be a lot of nights when your whole team's week. playing yeah so if you don't have defensemen that can contribute you're Earning ads guaranteed there, like guaranteed. Even if it's twice a week, adding defensemen, you're burning up half your ads just to get defensemen in. Which you want to talk about defensemen not being valued? Well, they're they're following by your same trend. You basically just say that you wasted a bunch of ads for no reason. So why not find one defenseman or maybe a second defenseman that's worth rostering and get those guys in hand, and then just say screw D. I'm just going to add forwards when I need them. Yep. That that uh that Brent Burns <laughs> looking pretty good. I want Burns. I want Burns. <laughs> leave, everyone just leave me Burns. Fuck no. He's gonna be too valuable. But that's the thing is like he's in terms of shots on goal potential from D. There's only five, six defensemen that will give you forward type shots on goal. If you can't get one of those guys. You're banking on there offensive There are going to be one or two that pop out of nowhere, too, as well. Though. Yes. Yes, like an Anthony D'Angelo or yeah. like a Neil Plionk or a whatever. And then you also look at guys like Jeff Petrie. Like, Petrie's role is going to be diminished because they have Romanov. They have uh, Jolson coming back. They have they just signed Edmondson. Like, Montreal's defense was weak, which is why, you know, yeah. Weber and whatever got a ton of time all those guys are now going to be just sharing the load more, which yeah. means none of them are going to stand out more. So there's going to be a lot more defensive groups that kind of work as a team and not stand out. So it's going to be the teams where you have the guy who goes on the power play and blast shot after shot after shot. Those are the only guys that are going to be with rostering this year. Mm-hmm. But like you have to forecast which guys those are going to be. And there's a lot of them that I looked at that have rosterable potential that if there's mock, if everyone just auto drafted, wouldn't be in the draft. So basically, uh, guys outside the top, you know, 160, that are potentially rosterable if things go the right way. Yeah. But there's probably also 12 defensemen in that top 200 that shouldn't be taken. So like, who's gonna burn picks in rounds eight, nine, ten on those yeah. guys? I took a defenseman was my first one last year in the sixth round, and even I think that was too high now. I took Carlson in round two. Mm. Yikes. 
<laughs> I got Vasilevsky now. Yeah. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think yeah, I pretty much so, like, touched it. I think. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. I, I'm I'm excited. Good luck to everyone. Yeah. Good luck. Just a All reminder: right. every year is going to be mo- worth more. So, you know, if you suck this year, don't suck next year. <laughs> oh, we didn't. Uh, what about your predictions? You didn't. You didn't necessarily hit that. Oh yeah, that's right. We didn't circle back to that. So. I think the favorites are you and Dylan. Oh, I think you. you and Dylan are the ones to... I, I think Dylan has the potential to be that much better. But... Not that I don't trust his drafting. I just don't know how he's going to go about it. Sometimes having as many picks in the top makes you make stories in your head about how they're actually going to be better this year or they're you know what i mean like sometimes it's easy to be like you know monahan's going to be great this year or gujo's going to be shit i'm uh, one or both could be, be terrible yeah. or yeah like you don't know right like yeah. both could be good both could be terrible one could be good one's a winger one's a center i i don't know what how it's a it's a tough minefield to navigate for dylan and if I was in his shoes, I would have traded one or two picks back just to have some release valve, I'd call it. I don't think he has a release valve, so he's already he's he's laying his hand or he's laying his his yeah. whatever at the start of the season, right? So I think that's gonna be tough on him, especially if he starts cold. Or if his goalies maybe it's not unmanageable get bad now, matchups though. to start. It is something you could he could still in theory trade one of his higher picks for two or like something like that. He could still make a release valve. It's not too late. Oh yeah. But at the same time, like a lot of people early don't want to trade picks and a lot of people sure. early want to see how their teams are working out. So like if it's a me or a Nick or somebody who's like, Oh yeah, sure, throw him over here, we'll give you a pick. It's worth whatever right now. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden we've got another top 60 guy where we shouldn't have makes dylan slightly less effective and us slightly better uh-huh. so i mean if you do that two or three times not just dylan i'm talking to anybody for that matter yep. it can create you can shoot yourself in the foot basically right without noticing it until it's too late and if you're dylan and you start off late you, your team's struggling you don't have a release valve and now you have a choice of panicking that's not usually a good recipe for success so I don't think he'll end up going down that avenue, but I'm scared about that in the back of like lurking in the background for him. Um, you you draft well. You we'll see him one don't one, usually reach. But... You yeah. Well, like yeah. I said, you know when to fold. You know you also know when guys maybe like for me like I sometimes have blind spots on guys that maybe I believe are bit of a one hit wonder. Aho would be one of them. Like for example, Sveshnikov. Um, Sveshnikov. He's way too high for me this year. He's way, 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 way too high. Uh, like third, fourth round, that's way too high for him. The fact that he's projected to go before Liney is disgusting to me. Um, so that's just one small example. Mm-hmm. Um, but you also kind of have a bit of a different read outside of Toronto where sometimes there's, you know, mystiques or false advertisements on certain players. And if you're told, you know, this guy sucks by 10 different players – or 10 different people you tend to think they suck and then all of a sudden they have a good season and like oh maybe we're wrong and it's like i believe usually. in those 10 people and yeah yeah you know what i mean though right so like whatever right but i think so if, i would say that you you will probably be second but it's yours to take from first oh, still to lose and then after that i thought i had sean up there um the more and more i think about it i i, I put a lot of value in his keepers I love that he has Panarin in round four, I think it is. And yeah, that's fair. Pasternak in grade or in grade in round like five, I think it is. Pasternak um, is two, I thought Pasternak's two, which is still amazing for him. Okay, yeah. I know he has I know he has good keepers. It's like two and three or whatever it is. Yeah, two he and does four. have some good ones, yeah. But then I'm like we'll get to this in the next podcast with our predictions and stuff of the of the standings, but like I don't have a good feeling about Hellebuck this year. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. In terms of like, I I don't think he'll be much better than replacement level when you consider wins and shutouts. I don't think he's gonna get like any shutouts. I think that last year was a bit of his career year, so I think he's gonna regress a little bit to the norm. 
um, which is still, you know, he's going to get a whole ton of shots. So like, that's going to help with the save percentage, but the goals against might take a little bit of a hit. I just, I don't think he is a goalie. That's a backbone. Like he was last year, last year. He was a Vez, Vez yeah, agree, yeah. Like he was, he was the backbone of his team. I don't consider him to be a backbone this year, maybe again next year. And once Winnipeg probably trades liney and figures out their D, yeah. but I, I, I just don't love that anymore. And like, he's got Nylander and other keeper, which is pretty solid. Um, he, I think, got a lot of easy points last year, and he was one of the guys who started the one goalie system. Trends, yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I think that other teams that might adapt that strategy can combat him more. Yep. I think there's going to be teams that are less afraid to continue to carry goalies that aren't actually helping them. Uh, same with defensemen. So I feel like some of these teams that were carrying three goalies, Ben, that all three of them weren't even worse rostering. Like he would have been better off finding uh, yep. a streamer and then two shooters and it would have made him more competitive. Right. Mm -hmm. So like, I think there's going to be less of those easy points. So I would put him and Jesse as the two battling or three and four. Mm -hmm. And then who do I have next? Who am I missing? Who are the next two playoff spots? Well, I'll go to the bottom. Yeah. I think Jamie's going to miss. Okay. Um, I just don't think he cares enough. I don't think he... Pretty good indicator. Yeah, I, I just don't think he cares enough. I, I think he I think he could do well. He's got a... He's got a good mind for it. And, like, he's he likes... He sometimes ha, likes his guys a little more than they're worth. And he sometimes doesn't like guys a little bit less than they should be worth. Just because they're um, not his. Yeah, he's got ownership bias. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, I think he can get caught up a little bit in that. And, like, I don't think he really has set himself up very well, um, especially with his keepers. Like, he traded away the picks that would have been better keepers. Like, so, for example, Point. He traded his sixth rounder away, so he's using his fourth rounder to keep Point because his fifth rounder was used to keep Carlson. So he kept Point two rounds above where he could have been. Still a good keeper spot for Point, but... If you cared, you probably could have traded some picks around and found a way to get better value and have one or two maybe picks above your keepers, which would have made you that much a better. Couple, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, even if it was one guy, like he could have at least got one more guy above his first pick, right? And that would have made him that much harder to beat. And I think that that's probably going to be the difference for him um, kind of, in yeah. a week. And it could end up being the difference for four wins on the season, which could mean the difference of you know fifth place and ninth place we forget that he almost he barely got in last year but it's funny because i did my own predictions when i went through the schedule and i basically said like alex win dylan win tory yeah. loss whatever and then i just went to the end and i totaled them up i think i had uh dylan with eight wins you with seven wins sean and jesse with six then it went down to me with four and then it went to three, three, two, and one. So like, there's no difference really between four, three, two, and one wins. Like that's yeah. one week going a different way, right? Like, so like the difference of the difference of the people who don't make it are going to be the people who fuck up on top. The people like you or Dylan who maybe you know go away and or do something sleep in and forget to change the goalie or do something just that normally wouldn't happen that would cost you the week that where you're like ah oh, whatever it's a loss i'll still make the playoffs could be the difference of me making the playoffs or nick making the playoffs or whatever right so it's going to yeah. be something that one of you guys does that I'll, I'll impacts one of us at the bottom yeah um or somebody trading off but so jamie i think will finish last um I think Steve will finish second last. Just that's more of a challenge than anything, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see. I want to see you make the playoffs. So let's see what happens. Yeah. Um. That's where I I kind of struggle. I believe I'll make the playoffs. I, yeah, we got to be confident. I'm, I'm gonna put everything into it. You know that it's it's not yeah. gonna be from lack of trying. It's not gonna be lack of anything. It's gonna be. Well, it might be just lack of my talent. team wasn't good yeah, enough. Lack of a team, like, but <laughs> yeah. But I have Vasilevsky and Shesterkin in net. 
I have Dry Seidel, who should still be a top contributor. I have Kachuk, who should be a guy who helps me beat a lot of teams with hits, just because most teams, there's only like, like uh, Dylan has Matthew Chuck, um, Nick has uh, Evander Kane, you have Tom Wilson, and I think that's kind of it in terms of like the big mm-hmm. producing hitting wingers, right? So like against the seven other teams, I'm probably winning hits. So that gives me an advantage there, although I'm a disadvantage on the offense. But if I draft well, it's a good maybe I can cover up that gap. Yeah. But I think that between Joey, Nick, and Ben, one of them will make it. I know that's a bit of a cop out. Yeah, that's basically but... what I was saying too. Yeah. But I actually, I, I, think call, I Nick... called Nick missing actually. Yeah, I think if it's in, if if it's going to come down to paying attention, doing the work, not fucking up on the draft. And just making sure that he makes everyone's life a living hell to try and get make his chances the best. It'll be yeah. That goes to Nick, Nick for sure. But he's the least talented, hundred percent. Yeah, I just I just feel like between Ben and Joey, one of them will just luck box into it because of their talent. I think Joey has more to lose because he's a, I think he's a little pissed off from last year. I think he probably feels like he wants to make a bit of a stamp. Mm-hmm. If he's serious about the league, like when I chatted with him, he sounded pretty serious and he sounded pretty. Uh, Almost like I'm gonna show you. Yeah, good. In a sense, like which was good, right? So like between him and Ben, Ben tends to not give a fuck about shit, <laughs> and like he's yeah, busy and that. stuff. And like he, a lot of times, like he'll maybe go and be with a client and be like, "Oh yeah, I'll be home by three and then all of a sudden it's like eight thirty at night, and he he's in Barry or something. And no, not that he forgot. He's just. I mean, it's just line of work and whatever. Like, there's a lot of times. No, like you forgot to like... his lineup is what I. I oh yeah, exactly. So there's going to be times where maybe on a Sunday there's a goalie start he needs and he won't no. go out and make that ad to get the win, and maybe somebody else will steal it from him. So that's why I feel like there's two or three wins to be stolen from Ben. But yeah. If Ben doesn't do that, I don't think those points are there. So that's why I would say, it, I think it's Ben or Joey's spot to lose. But Nick's definitely going to be freaking trying to get it. Yeah, like I'm with you there. Oh, so it's it's going to come down to that, which should leave a consolation round that's interesting. Yeah, that's but, true. That's true. But the other thing too is now that there's keepers, there's really only if everyone's going to keep four guys on a 14 roster spot, there's really only 10 roster spots now to go around. If you got to think that people are going to pick in the round, top four or five rounds their guys, that's half their roster. So there's really only about 40, maybe 50 roster spots in the league of flexibility right now. So, I mean, if that plus minus keeps going the wrong way, there could be 30 players of plus minus. So that means, you know, last year, some people got some pretty hefty returns at the trade deadline. Maybe there is no trades at the trade That's deadline. Because maybe I did want to touch everyone's on competing. I want, yeah. I want, like, how is this going to go out of the gate? Like, this is because we're basically hitting the ground running in this one. Like there's no not a whole lot of room for error. So like I don't and that's know. That's why I would rather have flexibility. It regardless of the talent, I'd rather have flexibility, even if it means I have to burn five ads in the first three weeks to get three wins. I can do that and then ride out the next couple weeks, take a couple losses, well, and then are, go at well, it again. Some people might give up too down the stretch, so you won't need your ads. Who knows? And if I am competing against those big boys and they've already got the points off me or I've stolen points off them, I'm now competing against, in theory, who should be towards the bottom and who should be trading off. Yeah. I should be able to add, too. So if I can add off of my competitors, I make them worse, me better. It's it's worth more than just the assets I move in that trade. So, right? the, so the first week starts on the 13th, right? Yes. That's a Wednesday. First night is... That's so it'll Wednesday. be Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday through Sunday. It'll be the week oh, so plus it's like a double week, a week and a half. Yeah. Okay, it's okay, like okay. ten days or whatever. I was yeah. worried. Yeah. I'm like, oh, the very first week's gonna be like some four week days. No, no, no. Okay, good, good. So that that week will probably be most normal out of the first three or four weeks. But like, I'm hella worried on goalies. Remember what happened in the lockout? Were you watching no, hockey back I, then? I gave up on hockey during that. So when they came back, every goalie and their mom had like a groin groin injury. Hmm. And like every, like that's why they made these special rules with like the three goalies on the main roster and then unlimited off, not counting it towards the taxi squad. Because they know, uh, who was it? Um, Somebody brought out a stat on TSM the other day. I'm going to make it up because I don't remember off the top of my head. 
but they were saying something like there hasn't been a team to win a playoff game that hasn't started at least three goalies in the regular season. And that's a regular 82 game season. It hasn't had three goalies that haven't played at least five games. I think that's what okay. it was. Wow. So like no no team has won a playoff game that hasn't had at least three goalies start five games for them. Hmm. Which I mean you look at some teams, you question their first goalie, then you move to goalie two and you're like, mm. then you move to goalie three and you're like, okay, that's gonna hurt. And like I mean, Tampa Bay, hopefully this doesn't happen. But let's say Vasilevsky like tears his groin and he's out for the year. Tampa Bay is no longer the team to lose that division. Like they got what McElhaney and I couldn't even tell you. Louis Deming. Goalie. I don't know. No, I don't think Deming's even there anymore. No. He's oh, not. they got um Pro- they got uh, the guy from Ottawa, but he has concussion issues. Marcus Hogberg. Oh, okay. But he won't be playing because he has concussion issues. So, but there's a kid. Uh, a kid. He's 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 okay, but he's he's not an NHL or he's fringe. So he's their third guy, and he's young, unproven. Yeah. I don't know. All right, fantasy I... hockey is going to be lit. We yeah. should uh, wrap this segment up, and we can switch over to the other one if you want. Sounds good. Yeah, I think so. All right, good luck, Clef Bombers. Yeah, um, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Draft's coming up. Right. <laughs> we'll, we'll touch base on the draft probably maybe next week even. Who knows? All right, peace. Yeah.